OTAN, Outreach and Technical Assistance Network. Hi, those of you who don't know me, my name is Farzana Kasim, and I am an O10 SME. SME stands for Subject Matter Expert, and I also work as an ITTA. We call it ITA. ITA stands for Instructional Technology Teacher Advisor. I work for Evans Community Adult School, and it is part of Los Angeles Unified School District. So I think I, um, the, well, I don't think I have anyone from LAUSD yet, but um, enough about me. You are here for Miss Edge. Miss Edge, I call it Miss Edge because it's MS Edge, Microsoft Edge. So I am gonna talk about Microsoft Edge browser. Before I go on, I would like to see how many of you have used Microsoft Edge re or you know, regularly or just started using it. Can anyone just chat or anything you want to say? Yes, no, whatever, a little, there you go. All right, just enough to see. If you have used it in the past, the old Internet Explorer, or you have always been, I call the, the people who use Google Chrome, Chromers, are you all Chromers? Okay, there you go. All right, just recently started. Okay, so you use Chrome. All right, so what? Well, that's good because this new Microsoft Edge browser is the Chromium based browser. So that means it is free and open source web based project, web browser project. The codes that they use in that browser were developed and maintained by Google. So technically you're not betraying Google Chrome or Google and you are still, you know, are loyal to Google. So please don't feel bad about betraying Google, but definitely um, uh, let's just get to it and see. So this is our old Internet Explorer, right? That's the one you, uh, if you are still using Windows 7, you will still see that. Or some of you who are still using Windows 10 will still see it. And then there comes the Microsoft Edge, the legacy one. That's the one with, the, I call it, it's a 2D looking um, icon. And this one is the Chromium based. The last one is the Chromium based to Microsoft Edge. So you are you get the both of both worlds, a Chrome and Microsoft Edge. So if you are feeling nervous about using a bit, uh, a, you know, a new browser, don't be because your familiar features are can still be found in Microsoft Edge. So let's get uh, let's take a look um, a deeper look because I always like to take a deeper look before I commit to it. Because if you don't know what you're looking at, you may say, eh, I don't like it, I will just move on. So since you take your time to get in here, why not, let's not move on, but we will stick with it together and then learn something, a tool or two together with me. I always call it, be a Sherlock Holmes. Just go and take a look at Everything that you see first, the basics is important. When you are in a room, you should know, okay, this is my room now. I need to know where the things are, what shelf, what books, where things are. Same thing with Microsoft Edge. What you are looking at now is Microsoft Edge browser, the top portion of Microsoft Edge browser. Those of you who wish to follow uh, along with me and you go ahead and open your Microsoft Edge browser, not the old one, but the new one. Then we can take a look at it. The icon locations may be a little off, but similar icons will, should still be there. So let's start with the basics. We all know in Google Chrome, you have those buttons, the left button, the left arrow, that is back arrow, right? You go back to the previous page and there is a right um, arrow. That one means if you have an open page already, a, a web page already, and you have accessed it already, then it will allow you to go to the, the for, to forward it, right? To go to the, uh, uh, the next page, that's what it is. And then there is a, uh, um, half, not half, a broken circle with an arrow that is Microsoft 
Edge's refresh button. That button may be different from Chrome, but it is still the, um, the refresh button, the very uh, important button. Most of the students or teachers usually don't know where, what that does. You really should practice using that refresh button. It gives you up to the minute updated information. Because if for any reason you are like, why isn't that information not changing or you know frozen or something, just simply click on refresh button and that should do the trick. And of course, the little home icon tells you, you can go back to your homepage. What that means is if you have set your school website as your default homepage, it will go back to default homepage whenever, whichever website you are on, you can get back to that homepage. Next one is new tab. A lot of time we want to leave whatever we are looking at and we don't want to close it. So what do we do? We open a new tab. When you open a new tab, you can just leave the previous page alone and you can go back to it anytime you want. You can have up to, I think it's 255 or something tabs. It's a lot of tabs you can open. I don't think we use 250, 200 or more, right? So just use, you know, if you wish to open more tab, go ahead and open more tab. Next one is the address bar. We all know that you have all used Google Chrome and everything, but the, this address bar nowadays, not, not only this ad, address bar recently or the past couple of years, Chrome and Microsoft and other browsers allow you to search keywords or, or any words, right? Any words that you are looking for or a phrase or something or a very specific website. When I say a very specific website, I meant CNN.com, MSNBC.com, MSN.com, something like that, right? You know something with .com, you know something with .org or .edu, so on. When you know a very specific website address with .something, it is better to type in the address bar than the search box. There is a search box usually around, um, around here, around here, right? There is a search box, Google has it. But this is not what we are looking for. So just remember that if you know specific website, it is better to type in the address bar. That way, Google will not search millions and billions of pages and confuse you with, you know, whatever is the, uh, the, the highest ranked. So it is just reminding about this address bar. All right, so next, oh, let's see, let me erase this link and here. The next one I want to walk on, uh, show you is, let's go back here. It's called add, uh, add favorite. Of course, we all know how to use that fav favorite button on Google Chrome, same thing in here. So add favorite is when you want to bookmark and you want to come back to it again and again and again. That's when you use add favorites. But the question is, what about where can I find my favorites? All your favorites that you bookmarked are all over here under that little half or um, a broken uh, star. That's where it's, you can find all your bookmarked items, your web pages, your YouTube pages, and everything else. The next one is collections. The collections is just exclusively for Microsoft Edge browser. So in case you are saying, why should I change it to my, or, or, or start using, not change, no one should change because with whatever we know, we should not unlearn. We should always continue to use, but why should you start using or use it along the way? It's because of collections, that collections are really great and you might want to think about using it. And I will tell you what collections are. Collections in Microsoft Edge browser helps you organize or keep track of your ideas on the web, right? Whether you are preparing a lesson plan or um, a, a specific um, upcoming holidays project that you have with your students, those the collections will help you organize and keep track of your ideas. They are not book, they are bookmarked, but it's temporary. If you wish to delete them, you can anytime you want, you can, you know, you can delete them anytime you want. 
I will explain uh, or I will deep dive, uh, uh, you know, um, dive deeper on collections in a couple of, uh, I believe, set, uh, slides. The next one in here is those three dots. We all know about three dots. Three dots usually means what, et cetera, right? It means there are more to say. There are more features on in that three dot, in those three dots. That's what that's what it means. So when you were to click on, if you were to click on those three dots, you will have more options, but uh, 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 what do you call it? Uh, comfy, uh, things that you can customize or, or, or configure uh, to make it, you know, your customized Microsoft browser. That's what you want to do. Whenever you want to configure or customize something, you come to those three dots and that's universal for many apps and many uh, browsers, okay? Collections, I, let me see. All right, collections, which I just mentioned, can be found on the top bar of your Microsoft Edge browser. As you can see, you, uh, I, have, is, uh, I have them, uh, I have the short, uh, shortcut, keyboard shortcut, Control, Shift, and Y. If you were to press those three together, you will, be, you will get access to your collections. Those of you who have not used collections before, you will have, uh, you will not have anything, of course. If you are following along with me and you are on a web page, you can click on that collections and you will see what else you can do. Of course, I'm going to show you live demo in, in a few seconds. If you want your collections to be available for you, I didn't, you know, on your cell phone, on your uh, tablets, or on your school uh, computer, your home computer, your home laptop. Nowadays, we all have multiple devices, right? We use. So if you want those collections that you started at home or at work to, to, to sync, then you need to sign into your account. It could be your school account, your own Hotmail, Outlook, whatever account it is, but it has to be Microsoft account or your school account. Why don't I show you that? And let me share, new share. Let's go here. Can you all see my Microsoft Edge browser? Or not yet? How about now? Yes, very good. Now you can see it. This is Microsoft Edge browser. The collections are the one with the little plus sign. And the plus sign on the top is the new tab, not that one, the one on the far right. In case my video screen or our video screens are blocking, you might want to move that video screen to your left and you will see collections on the top. If you click or if you type Control Shift Y, you will see uh, a collection. So now I will click on it. As you can see, I have a lot of collections already. If you don't see any collections, you can always start new collection. Before I go to this collection, I want your attention here. Do you notice my little uh, uh, profile picture? My little profile picture tells me I am logged into my school account. That way, when I want to uh, uh, continue with the collections or want to go back to the collections that I had at home, that's where I can get everything back. Okay, so if you are not logged in, you simply need to click on the uh, little icon over in the same area and you can go ahead and log in somewhere around there since I cannot show you because I'm already logged in. You can go ahead and log in that way. So your collections will, will stay uh, synced at all times. So let's go back to the collections. When I click on collections, TDLS page, for example, this particular page that I'm looking at is not on my collections. But if I do want to make this one as my collection, I can start a new collection. Or I can right click on the page itself and I can say add page to collections. That is, that's all you have to do. If I like this page, I want to start with it. You have you have many choices. If you already have collections, multiple collections already ahead of time, then you can decide where it belongs or you can simply start new collection. So I can start new collection over here or I can start new collection on the top right. 
where the uh, collections frame is. So I will simply say start new collection. Automatically, the, by default, it will put the today's date, but it doesn't really tell me after three or five days, I wouldn't even know what that is. So let's give a, a proper name. A proper name would be, I don't know, this has to do with TDLS, um, you know, project that I'm working on or t for the next couple of days, today and tomorrow, I may need to access it again and again, or things that you want to collect, you know, that your, um, your uh, uh, other workshops, the presenters from other workshops, they have shared some links with you and you have collected them instead of having them as your, your, your you know, bookmarks. You can simply mark it as TDLS 2022 and then have all these win, you know, links open up here and then add them, start collecting them, all the things that you have learned from this, you know, from these workshops uh, at O10 or anywhere else. So right now I'm going to call it TDLS 2022 and think things, anything to do with TDLS, I will continue to put here, right? So that is something you can do in terms of collection. Why don't I show you my ready-made or work-related uh, work collections that I have done? Every day, five days a week, I come to work. But every day, five times a day, uh, five days a week, I have to use these 10 items. So instead of every time I open Microsoft Edge browser, oops, Quickly, hold on. Let me quickly open. Sorry, I closed it. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna come go back and share the Microsoft Edge again. I'm back to Microsoft Edge. Every day I come to work and I get this blank page, right? It doesn't really have anything, but I don't want to reopen the 10 tabs that I have to use every single day. All I have to do would be, I will go to collections, simply go to my work, you click on work. As you can see, I have these pages collected. I use every single day. I am not gonna click one by one, no way, I'm not gonna do it. I want Microsoft Edge to do the job for me. This is what you will do. The three dots in that collections page. You simply click on the three dots. You say open all. Once I click open all, all my 10 tabs that I use every single day will be all lined up up there. I would like to pause for a second to see what I have on chat. Okay, all right. Um, are we good or is there any question or should I stop? Uh, there aren't any questions in the chat, but if anyone does have a question, feel free to raise your hand or come off mute. All right. If not, all I will right. continue then. Okay, thanks. Okay, so as you can see, I have all these 10, 10 apps, uh, I mean, sorry, 10 uh, tabs open. And if you look at the 10, of course, that, you know, our district requires that we sign in again and again, that's not the problem, right? We can still go ahead and sign in things that I need to have, all these things. These are every single day that I have to use. Okay, so things like that I'm working on a website or anything that I need. So all these things are here. And once I don't need it, I simply can click on, uh, I can just, you know, close them, not close them, I collapse them. But that is next slide, which I will explain. So let's go back to the collections that I was talking about. So you, you don't have to retype the same websites again and again, because you already have all these collections ready for you. So every, I have two different jobs at my work. So work related, this work is for all the things that I do every day. And this one is for Monday and Wednesday only. So if I go to this again, I only have these five items for that Monday and Wednesday only job. Again, I go simply, I simply go to the three dots, open all, voila. And those websites will be open for me right there. And I don't have to dig through any of this information. I don't have to retype. I don't have to memorize one time deal only. So that is something collections can do. Oh, I got three chats. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Toby. Um, then 
we are gonna go, okay, so let me go back to the next one in here. Let's go back here. So, sorry about that. Can you all see my uh, new, pro, uh, the slide called productivity? Yes. Yes, very good. Microsoft Edge wants you to be more productive as if we are not productive enough, right? So they are always focusing on productivity and I always love to be productive too. So I am gonna tell you if you are, if you wish to be more productive or these little things may not be big deal, but the habit that you do will come in handy for you. Those are a second or millisecond type of things, but these habits that you learn can be very uh, uh, productive for you. Yes. Um, you got a race. Hi. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Um, I just wanted to bring your attention. There was a quick question in the chat from Drew C. And she wanted to know, was that a spreadsheet that is in the cloud or a regular document? It's uh, in the cloud. It's uh, off in the cloud, right? The spreadsheet. Okay. As long as you are logged in, imagine Google Sheet. Imagine all these Google Docs that you have to work. You logged in. If you are logged in, oh, yes, you have access to it right there. Amazing, right? I always love that. Yep. All clouds. So, okay, so this one is called productivity. What the first one would be vertical tabs. A vertical tabs look, the icon looks like this. This icon can be found if you are following along with me. Go ahead and quickly take a look at on your Microsoft Edge browser. It will always stay on the top left corner of your window. I mean, on your, yes, on your browser window. If you were to click on it, like this, can you see my uh, overlaying Microsoft Edge browser on top? I think so, yes, right? So we can see. Good, yes. right here, that browser will allow you to turn on vertical tabs. So I'm gonna show you, if you look at my, as you can see, I've got so many apps, uh, tabs on the top. I don't even know which one is which, I have to go through it one by one like this. Instead, you can simply click on turn on vertical tabs. And if you want to quickly see, now you have more words to look at than the top bar. So that's what the vertical tab does. And if you are not comfortable using it, I will be very truthful. I pretty much know what I, I, I need. So I don't really open more than five or 10 tabs. So in that case, I don't really like to use uh, vertical tabs, but I still wanted you to know it is possible to use it. Next and one. In, a, yes, you have a ahead. question in the chat. Yes. Um, Toby would like to know if Edge integrate, if it integrates well with Google. Yes, it does because this Microsoft Edge is Chromium uh, browser, we call it. It means it's Chrome based. So because Microsoft knows that the whole world likes to use Google <laughs> Chrome, so they are trying, they, they made this Google Chrome, sorry, not Google, Chrome based browser. That's yes, very good question. Thank you. It's called Chromium based browser. Microsoft Edge is known as Chromium based. So that's why if you say, oh, I only use Microsoft Edge, there are some Chrome users will be really offended. So just tell them, no, no, I use, I still use, I'm still loyal to Google Chrome, <laughs> all right? So next one I briefly showed you was called group tabs. Those of you who have, who, who, who you, you know, who use, um, what do you call it, multiple tabs, and they like to have all these multiple tabs, but you want to organize more, now will be the time to learn these group tabs. I am gonna, as you can see here, um, you, you have, uh, I have grouped three items, three different ones. One has to do with work related, which I showed you to the 10 tabs I have. Then the other one has to do with, at the time of the screenshot, I was working on Edge browser. I was creating these Edge, you know, to gathering information and websites and stuff, whatnot. All these things were all collected under this Edge browser. If I were to click on that Edge browser, all the websites that I was collecting, Edge, uh, Edge browser related info, it will all you know, uh, expand. And then of course, I was listening to some music and there are a couple of music I wanted to listen while I was working. So I had that as well. So why not show you this? 
So if you look at Microsoft Edge browser, as you can see on the top, do you see Microsoft, uh, sorry, work tab? If I click on it, it collapsed, right? It collapsed. Then if I click on ESL registration, it expands or it collapses, right? So because of that reason, you can group them. So if you group and then you want to add more and more and more tabs, whatever else that you want to add, go for it. You can just continue to do it. And some of those items maybe briefly, you just want to go briefly to a website and that's it. You don't want to, you, you're done with it, simply close it. And you are back to your uh, group page, I mean, sorry, group tabs. Where, when you get to group tabs, the question is, well, how do I make, how do I group them? This is how you will do. So for example, I am going to get all the news uh, websites, CNN, MSN.com, two now, right? Then I have MSNBC.com. Then I have the next one, FoxNews.com. I think, is it the name is correct? I don't know, I think. So, so there are four, right? So I have one, two, three, four, four websites, but I want to group them as, as news. So you simply click on the first tab and then you press shift button on your keyboard and click on the last tab. So skip the MSN and MSNBC, you go straight to the last tab, which is Fox News on my screen. So I'm pressing shift now and pressing Fox News. You may not see it clearly, but these four are highlighted now, sort of you know, selected. All you have to do now is right click, and then you can say, add tabs to group. All you have to do is, select new group and you simply type the name that you want to give news while you are type while you finish type i mean while you type the name why not select a a, a color whatever color you would like okay i would like this uh, purplish color and i now have a purple color you don't like this color change it whatever you want so your groups uh, your group tabs are color coded as well as named, right? So once you finish with it, and what if you like these websites, you have you want to listen to it every single time, every day. Simply add tab group to new collection. You see that? So you can reuse that new collections. There you go. So once I do that, let's check it out. I have it under collections. It's called news, and I have it up here. Now I don't need this news anymore. I can simply close the group, gone. That's all. You tap, you, you created a, a, a group tab and you, have, you can now focus on your work related stuff or your personal uh, uh, things that you're working on, right? That's, that is group tabs feature. The next one, any questions, chat? Is there a time limit for how long it will sit collections? No, it's yours. You decide when you want to delete, Jennifer. No, it, it is you. You decide that. Uh, why don't I actually, I love this question. Thank you very much. I mean, let me quickly show it to you. It's very important. I, I skipped that one. This is what you will do. Let's say you look at your collections and you say, I no longer need this. Actually, I already went to Switzerland. I'm done with it. I don't have anything to do with this Switzerland anymore. Can you all see a little uh, 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 box? You simply click way on the top. It gives you delete. You simply delete it. You don't need it. You delete it. That's fine. And but if you, if you, of course, once you delete it, it's all gone, right? So you simply click delete and you have, you can quickly undo it if you wish to. That's all. For now, I'm going to leave it because I have a few more things that I want to um, check again later on, right? So that's what you can do. Absolutely. Um, no, there is no, Susan. Uh, there is no byte limit or anything. It has to do with the, um, it has to do with Microsoft browser. No, th these are just collections, nothing. It, it doesn't take up so much space. All right. So this is good. Next. Can I continue? Everything good? 
Okay. All right. Yes. Very good. Next one is this. Do you notice nowadays, you not notice, you may already be doing it. You have teachers and students taking online classes, right? They have to fill out some worksheets and they have to do uh, sign, you know, we as teachers, we have to sign and submit these work, this paperwork and that paperwork. Did you know Microsoft Edge browser has built in PDF right in there in your browser? It is so cool, especially when we don't have, uh, you know, professional, um, what do you call it, professional um, PD, Adobe PDF, or, you know, we don't need to do detail, uh, you know, work, but we just need to quickly fill out some form, quickly go and sign in, do stuff, right? If that is the case, this is what you can do. So, for example, let's say you are you are you open a, 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 a you know a Microsoft Edge browser and you need to go to a, a, a browse um, a PDF or a worksheet and you look for a, a you know um, a website uh, with the uh, sample let's call it sample uh, job what is it called I just had that uh, application right application letter because I don't want to take you to uh, to other pages so I'm going to just simply type PDF so if you type the last word PDF anything to do with um, a PDF will pop up yeah something like this so did you see the little PDF it means not a website it is a PDF which you can either download or which you can access yeah so I want to take you there so for example let's take a look at this one Let's see what they have. So this looks like five pages long. And let's imagine yourself, you need to sign somewhere. And you just have to do something. Or oh, this is for you as teachers, right? So if you need to, here we go. Here's your draw button. Click on the little draw button, make it a little thicker, as thick as you want, your pen thickness, right? Select black or blue. Those are the standard color for signing your signature, or creating your signature, right? Or whatever, if you want to do, you can do that. Of course, we, we cannot really do um, a lot of signing with the draw button, but if you want, all you can do is download Microsoft Edge browser on your cell phone, access the same PDF, and then voila, you can still do that. You can still save it. But what if you want, to do this you have your students trying to fill out a form want to learn do you know a mock job application here you go add text simply click on add text come down with the little mouse it says last name what's the last name you're going to type kasim that's my last name here we go i go to first name i i type farzana here you have two I mean, you, you just added two texts. What if you want to change the color? Simply click inside one of the letters, change it to black, make it smaller. Here we go, smaller, smaller, bigger, bigger. You decide what you want. Some of the applications requires that you spread out the, uh, increase the text spacing or closer, whichever you want. All these things, you make a boo-boo, no problem. Simply click on delete button. You start all over again. This is a sample that I am showing you. Of course, there are different ESL worksheets, academic worksheets, stuff like that, right? You can make your students, you know, with just, just confident, without, without having to worry about, teacher, I don't have PDF, I don't know how to do this. No, simply tell them, download Microsoft Edge on your either cell phone or your tablet or your laptop, open the PDF directly from that in that in that not from but in that web browser you do what you have to do no problem you want to save your stuff right here there is a save button you simply click on the save button you give any name you want as you can see here i have been doing all these things i put the student's name the id number i have all these things taken i use these things you know microsoft edge browser and i save these things so whenever i need to you know refer back to a particular student i say ah yes i remember working with her but i don't remember what i did i have all these things ready for me to you know uh, retrieve because i save them you want to print right away Go print it, no problem. These are the things that you can do within Microsoft Edge browser. If I don't want to save, all I have to do is simply close it. 
If I click close, watch what it says. Changes you made may not be safe. At this time, I don't. But if you do want, all you have to do is cancel and save whatever you wish to save, right? Your, your doodles. <laughs> so all I have to do now is I don't need it. I will simply leave. And I am done with this, um, with this part, right? So you can view, edit, share PDFs right from the Microsoft Edge browser. That's what I just went over. So any questions? Am I going so fast? Are you guys okay? I get so excited. So that's why I'm sorry. <laughs> You're doing great. There is one um, quick question. It looks like R RG um, asked, when you save it, I'm assuming it is not open to the public and it is stored within your login. Is Excellent right? question. That's right. So can you see my, can you tell me what you see? <laughs> Uh, let's go in here, yes. I believe. Yes, that, that's good. Okay, so here we go. Um, one drive, where was I? I was going to, because I really have to show you because where you saved is, yes, you're right. It is so important. I wanted to show, uh, what did I do? Did I put you in here? because that is really important. The doodles, the things that you have saved can be found, depends on where you saved, actually, of course. It looks like, I, why couldn't I remember? Oh, I do remember. Here we go. These files, you see? I am mm -hmm. gonna show you, this is the PDF that I saved right here. I wanted to tell the students, this is your ID number. This is what you're gonna have to, oops. This is your, I, one second. Here we go. I, I explain, I, you know, I wrote some little notes. I highlighted them. I say what it is. Do you see how quickly I doodle all these things using that Edge browser? So you can make it into a, you can screenshot it. You can do a screenshot or you can just simply save it as PDF. It will always be PDF. So you can, you know, just just save it and you can always retrieve it. It is sitting in your computer unless otherwise you specifically say, I want to save it in Dropbox, Microsoft OneDrive or so on and so forth. Yeah, did I answer you. your question? Arich, I think, yes, okay. Yes, you can get a copy of my presentation. And if you don't mind, leave your email address. Um, uh, you can private chat with the host and then I, I will definitely send it out to you. Uh, since yes, we are all, you're good? Okay. Since we are talking about tabs and the groups and all these things, as you notice that I, when I was showing you these tabs, right? All these tabs, when I was showing you, these some of these tabs are taking up the space. What? No, they are not taking up. They are taking up our memory, system memory. So where, if you have 20 and 30 tabs open and you don't want these to be taking up your resources, or, you know, uh, memory or anything, this is what you can do. You simply go to settings, which I'm going to, oh, which I'm going to show you settings. And then you click on system. If you're following along with me, you can follow that. You go to settings, you click on system. And here is the system. Hold on, let me make it bigger. Not this one, wrong one. I wanna take you back to this one. Yes, I click on settings. You click on system here, optimize performance. What it does is this, if you know there are certain, you know, uh, uh, tabs you may not be using, you can come in here and say, if I don't touch these uh, tabs for the next two hours, I need you to put them to sleep. So they all take, take they, they all take a, a nap over here until you go back and click on it. So. If I were to make it 30 seconds, as you can see, if you, I don't know it's you can see it or not, but here is what you can see. If you look at my top area here, they look a little bit lighter. Of course, you should test it with, on your own computer. But if I click move around, you will see they lit up. That's what it means. They, are, they were sleeping. 
because I did not use them for 30 seconds. So it means you are not taking up any memory or you know system resources so there was a question right will it um uh, is there a byte limit or or you know what will happen will it take up too much of your memory or anything don't worry this is only uh, available in microsoft edge browser you can simply march deselect whatever you want so especially at the end of the day, your shift, and you don't want to close any of these websites, you can simply say six hours of inactivity, 12 hours of inactivity, if you wish. Of course, if you don't want, you can always go back to collections and you can get that, right? So that's something that you can do. We call it, I call it, put tabs to sleep. Nothing really, but just enough if you are concerned about you know um, your resources being taken away which means your resources from your system your computer i would like to ask a question now those of you who regularly use or who occasionally use do you know anything about web capture i will wait for you to say yes no or i have used it with google or something else no okay all right, so web capture actually is part of Microsoft Edge browser. All you have to do is when you receive my PowerPoint or PDF, all you have to do is look for this button. Every time you see this button, please remember this menu will only be available if you right click on your Microsoft Edge browser. This anywhere in your browser. This is how you would normally do. Uh, let me change this. Okay, go back here, Edge browser. So this is what you will do. If I go to a web a page here, let me go to a good one. All right, let's see. I am on a page and I like these this picture gorgeous i am so hungry is it lunchtime it is lunchtime and so let's say i want this uh, screenshot all you have to do is right click here we go web capture we have web capture so if i click web capture it's going to give me two options capture the area means you decide which part which image which one or capture full image that means the computer will i mean the uh, uh, you can get the whole full image right but i am interested in all these smoothies so i will simply select capture area and i will click on here and drag it this is what i want that's all i want and let's bring kiwi also there we go now i got it if you know if you look at the uh, bottom of my screen you will get two part two features two options one is called that's right like a snipping tool with the snipping tool you have to press windows shift s on your computer you have to do that fine do it no problem a lot of our students don't know right so it is already built in for you so microsoft is taking taking over seriously but i am loving it anyway <laughs> um so copy means you just simply copy that and put it in your Microsoft Word, your email, or whoever you want to send it right, right there, right? Or what if you want to add some stuff? You want to put your little do, you know, uh, emoji or sorry, you know, little drawing or something. We don't have a lot. Uh, only draw. I am sure in the future, web capture may have more tools that people can use, you know. So in this case will be draw only. Again, you can draw, you can do whatever you wish to do. So let me select something. And then I like this one. And then, you know, whatever that thing you want to do, you want to erase, here we go. Or you want to act to your collections again the collections are here right what if you are working on you know any very specific recipe and you want some pictures stuff like that here we go add to collections if you already have it you have you can select or you can start new collection and that's it you can go back to your collection over here on the top you already have your smoothies as you can see I should change a name. I will call it 
smoothies. I want smoothies ideas, right? So this is what I can have. So it is now in collections. You don't need it anymore. You simply save it. I mean, you can simply close it or you can save it as an image. You simply click save. It is now saved for you. And where, do, where is it? It will always be under downloads. They will always go to under downloads. Here it is. And you can call it smoothies. Here we go. I have the image now. I can attach it. I can use it, uh, re reuse again and again and again the way any way I want. That is what Web Capture can do. Your snipping tool. That's right. I like the term. How about create a QR code? Can somebody, okay. this is a question now. I know it may be very easy for you, but this is what I would like to know. Have you, do you remember the past few months, years ago, um, we, we had to go to generate a QR, QR code generator website. You had to go to free QR code generator, this and that, right? You go to a website, you start looking for it. You have to copy the image, I mean, picture, I mean, not picture, the web link, you go in there and you have to do that. Have you guys done that type of QR code? Um, uh, you know, go to a website to get QR code. Have you done that before? Like, you know, you have to go to a website, specifically to a website, they will do the QR code for you. Oh, no. Yes, you have done that. So if you've done that, it means such a pain. That's right, Susan. That's right. It is a pain. You have to go to a website. And there were many companies. They are selling. They want you to sign up for it. They have to do all these things. That's right. It expires. Oh, my God. I am pain. Here we go with this Microsoft Edge browser. You don't need to. You simply go to the web page you like. Right click, especially when you have a YouTube link you want to share your, send your students, right? Can you imagine YouTube link has like 30,000 characters in there. You don't even know what to even type. There we go. Go to your YouTube link. You Whatever video that you like, you go and right click on the same page as YouTube pages. You click create QR code for this page. Why don't we go ahead and do that right now? I go to a YouTube page. Here we go. I'm on a YouTube page. I want to share, uh, share this uh, uh, iconic um, classical music. I open it. And here is the link right way on the top. I simply click on the link. I sorry, sorry. I don't need to click on the link. I am I I take it back. I will come back here. This is the big the 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 video I want my students to see. I will simply do this. Right click. Create QR code for this page. Here is the little QR icon. I get it. Voila. If anyone wants to uh, uh, scan it now with your cell phone, you will get this music right on your cell phone now. If you wish, I'll leave it up for you for, for a second or two. You see, you can either copy this or download it. For me, I will download it because this, be this is my QR code now. It will not expire. I can use it a million times as again and again. This is yours. And that is cool. Don't you think it's cool? QR code right in there for you in that Microsoft Edge browser. All right, here we go. Any questions? I don't see any questions on the chat. Okay. Oh, okay, what would be the advantage of sharing the QR code over sharing a link provided the link isn't too long? Oh, that's fine. It is your, your you know, if a, if a link is like just msn.com, it's like three dots, I mean, six, seven, seven characters, right? That's it. So why would you, you know, you can do that. You don't need to go ahead and do that. But the, the link that I showed you in my, uh, uh, um, what is it called? YouTube, if you look at it, watch how many characters are going. That's a lot of characters right there. And so if our, if any of our students type it wrong, or, you know, sometimes students copy, you copy, and then students mistakenly miss the last letter or they erase it by mistakes, there goes, the link will no longer work. So due to that reason, you might want to use a QR code. Do you notice there is a little QR code right there, right there where I am pointing way on the top. So if you don't want to do right click, 
any web page can be made into QR code, just to let you know. Any web page can be made into a QR code. So here, as soon as you click in the address bar, it will become a QR code. If I go in here, as soon as you click in, you get a QR code. So if you don't want to make a right click and QR code, you can simply go up there. But I have a habit of um, using um, uh, right click. So, you know, I that's one of the reasons I wanted you to right click because if you, if you anytime you want to do something or if you are in doubt, right click. That's why that's my motto. <laughs> All right, can I continue? Any questions? Let me see. Okay, <laughs> yes, the music is really great. I don't like listening to music. Um, when I am really stressed, um, I listen to this. So that's 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 one of the reasons I'm sharing it. <laughs> um, here is this. This one is nothing really productive or anything. But those of you, um, we want to, you know, those of you who want to, um, what do you call it, custom, uh, personalize your web pages. So, for example, if I were to open a new tab all every single day, every time I click on a new tab, this is all, that's all I will see my blank page. I like it blank page because I know where I'm going. But if I, if you like to listen to read news or anything, you simply click on this little settings button and you can change to other layouts. If you want to read some news, some informational stuff, some inspirational stuff, some something that you want to focus on, you can change any layout. For me, I only like this custom made page because I need to focus I'm at work right so in that case this is where you you can leave it at but let's go and change it to focused focus what it does is here we go oh. hold on okay at least let's go to inspirational I think I was already on focused inspirational this tells you the, the image background is so gorgeous. I just wanted to just want to go and visit there. I don't know where that is, right? And then you have all these um, uh, news, weather, something else is happening. I don't know why it is. Uh, it looks inspirational and nothing looks inspirational except for the, the background that I have. These are a little bit sad to read. But anyway, here's some food. It makes me so excited about it. Yes, it may be inspirational now. How about informational? similar to the previous one, but it has more mu uh, news and stuff, right? So any layout you want, you can change it. That is page layout. This has nothing to do with any productivity, but at least it's there for you, who, those of you who want to customize um, or personalize your Microsoft Edge browser. So sorry, I'm... <laughs> um, I'm in an office, so that is the reason. All right, so... Let's go back here, personalize your new page with page layout. You don't need go, to go any further. Just open a tab. You will see the little setting button. You click on it. You will have four options or three options and you select what you want. That's all it is. You just have to, you decide if you want to personalize your new page or not. Read aloud. How many of you know about read a lot? May I have yes or no or something, please? Yes, okay, all right. So read aloud, especially, yes, really great. That's right, especially, I don't know, know about um, others, I mean, your work or uh, your employment, but my work, I have a lot of students. My student population is all, you know, uh, uh, ESL students. And seriously, it, it really helps, especially when they want to hear, you know, the pronunciation or something. Not that great, but still, because Microsoft is improving. As you know, there is no such thing as, you know, all done type. So this is what it is. Yes, read aloud is if you go to a web page and while you're working and you really don't have much time to read, but you still want to listen. So this is what you can do. So what if I go to my collections back? I have news, right? I have all these news. I want to open MSNBC only. And then I want to listen not listen as in video or audio, okay? I want to read an article, but I don't want to sit down and read those articles, but I want computer to read it for me. Okay, so let's see what I should do. Let's click on this. Here we go. 
I have an article here. I don't want to read. I am working on another project or another app or another program. I will simply right click. Here is read aloud. So if I click on read aloud now, can you, let me see, share some. All right, let's go again. So here is the play button on the top, read aloud. It means you are in the read aloud mode, not in the regular website mode, but in the read aloud mode, it tells you there. And here is the play button forward and the rewind and voice options. So you, right now, Microsoft David is selected. You can select several other voices that you want to test. Or you can have it slow if you have students who need to listen, um, you know, read aloud, I mean, do the read aloud. Each individual student, ask them to go to this or that website. They can all customize it here. So here, normal or fast. Of course, fast will be really fast. Let's stick with normal for now and let's play. Lance demo has single and co-op options, meaning a friend can join in on the limited time Kirby experience. Did you hear it? Yes. Thank yes, you. that's right. So that is read aloud. That's what that's all it is. So you can change anything you any uh, voice options as you want. So there is nothing much for you to memorize or anything. It's right there. The only thing you must remember is as soon as you click read aloud, make sure you look at on the, top, the look at the top bar where I am pointing now. The top bar is where it tells you you are in the read aloud mode. If you want to get out of this read aloud mode, simply close the, the mode. Yes, can you do this with a PDF? Actually, yes. So PDF as in it has to be, the PDF has to be open from Microsoft Edge browser. So let's go to, um, okay, let's go back to worksheets for PDF, right? So let's see, am I doing? That's right, that's right, Dr. Toiby, it's true. So oh, let's see, worksheets, PDF, let's just do that. Oh, just to let you know, even though Microsoft, if they hear it, they will, be real, they will really hate me. I love almost everything about Microsoft. I hate Bing, just for the record. I, I know it's being recorded. I want to repeat it again. I hate Bing, okay? So just so, just so you all agree, <laughs> I, I, I hate, I cannot stand it. Oh, worksheets. Can you imagine how I have to come down to this uh, PDF? There you go. So let's just say here you have a PDF. Let's look for a PDF, a good one, I hope. <clears throat> oh, why can't I get a PDF? That, didn't I have a one before? They should have one before, worksheet. So sometime I'm, I can get PDF with that way. So anything that you want to open, Let's just open this one again. Here is a PDF, as you can you see, right? This is a PDF. I can do the read aloud. Part I, part I, exercises. One, exercise one simple present sentences A, M, R, is, one. Can you, do you see? It reads it for you. Of course, this one is not that great, but still it reads it for you. So it is really great. Uh, you know, tool that if you want to use it. Uh, that's right, you read the words. <laughs> that's right. Yes, thank you. Thank God I've got a, a group of people who still, who, who hate, um, uh, you know, being like me. So good. This is, um, I hope that I answered your question about read aloud. Since we're talking about read aloud, read aloud an immersive reader, the two to be told, they are totally two different one, but you can reuse the same screen. For example, if I were to bring you back here, read aloud, <clears throat> can some websites will have read aloud as well as immersive reading. So if I take you back to this page, do you remember that we were doing a read aloud on this page, Kirby experience? But this time, what I want your attention is, immersive reader. What it does is this, 
It lets you read more comfortably with immersive reader, clutter free. We call it clutter free because when you go to a website, for example, like this, which I'm going to show you, as you can see, I've got advertisement, ad choices, things I may have, you know, looked through before. God knows what else, right? All these things. But all I want to do is read this article. I want my students to read the articles. All you have to do is if that website, whatever the page you are on, please remember this note I'm about to say, if the web page allows you to have an immersive reader, it will tell you on the top. As you can see, it says enter immersive reader, that little book, book, open book with the uh, speaker icon that tells you this page can be used as immersive reader. Watch what happens. Wow, isn't it neat? The whole article is right here, especially when you have students that you want them to focus. Please focus only on reading this. I want you to take notes. I want you to do this or that, whatever. No more advertisement, no more or no more, you know, things that I looked before, any of uh, anything at all, just simply here. Now you want to make use of your read aloud. Here is your read aloud again. Click on read aloud. Kirby, Kirby and the Forgotten Land, Wild Mode Guide. You see that? So it reads it for you. Immersive reader is right there. All, both of them, two in, you know, two in one. So how do you get immersive reader? You have three choices. One, well, actually two choices. You can simply, no, actually you still have three choices. <laughs> one, you can click on a, a, a shortcut F9 or right click on any page, you can look for open immersive, open in immersive reader, or simply look for this icon on your address bar. That's why I mentioned the address bar in the beginning of my workshop. So you need to, you can you can easily find it. Remember, not all web pages will allow you to have immersive reader. So please note. Any questions? You guys are very quiet. I hope I'm not boring you to sleep. You are all good. Um, how am I doing with time? Can you tell me, please? Yes, you're doing great on time. It's 11.20 okay. and we have until quarter till. Okay, very good, thank you. All right, so next one I want to show you is this. I did not show you uh, on the web page uh, on the browser, but I want you to look at it together first. Look at these together first, okay? When you <clears throat> when you are in immersive mode on an article, you are in an immersive mode. You want your students to start using, you know, reading it or read aloud or whatever. You will see this particular bar. This bar has items. What are the features? Text present uh, preferences, grammar tools, reading preferences. The two to be told, most of these, uh, the grammar tools are not that great yet. Um, I'm sure they are fixing, or perhaps when they were creating these grammar tools or this particular feature, they did not invite teachers like us or like you to be part of the creation because they have a lot of mistakes in these uh, parts of speech and stuff. We came across with um, that issue when I was doing a workshop on the same topic. So for example, I am now in immersive mode. I will quit the read aloud because I wanna get to text preferences, grammar tools and reading preferences that I just showed you on my PowerPoint. If you were to click on grammar tools, as you can see, it, you can turn on nouns only. Your students, if you want them to focus on nouns on this particular article, you can tell, you can decide what color you want nouns to be. Green color, all the nouns should turn on. If you want the students to focus on adjectives, you can change the color, turn it on. They will only focus on the adjectives. So it, like I mentioned before, last workshop I had, one of the teachers or attendees mentioned a great point that there are 
lots of mistakes in there. So you might want to read the article first, you might want to curate first and see what is what, is what right? So all these um, parts of speech, you might want to be mindful of, uh, of you know, the, the article may have. So I mentioned it to you, the bad side of it, of course, they will always fix it, but just letting you know. Yes, any question or do you see you good? Oh, okay, all right. So now next one is text preferences. As you can see, I deliberately made it large so I can show it to you. Here we go. You can make it smaller, medium size, or you can make it te uh, text spacing. Change the font, make it center. You want it in this color, or you want it in black and white, black background with a white uh, font or white background with the black fonts, right? You be the owner of this immersive reading, right? So you have a lot of preferences that you can do. Line focus, if you have students with uh, some issues, then you can make sure you ask them to change one at a time so they can only focus on one at a time, one line at a time, not one sentence, but one line at a time. And here is the picture dictionary. Let's take a look at the picture dictionary. They're not that great, but still is good. I don't know if there is a picture in any of these. Yes, as you can see, it says path. If I click, it shows a little path. So what if I click on something force? Oh, force means this picture. Some of them are not that great, as I mentioned before. So you can make use of any of these things. And I would really suggest if you are interested in you know, using it, or if you, if, you, if you say, you know what, all I care out of this workshop is, that's why only one immersive you know, reading, that's all you wanted, just do that. If you don't learn the rest of the tools from me, I don't, re I'm fine. But just learn this one, make use of it with your students, take a few minutes of your time to learn it. You will find out some of your students will love this because it helps them with their learning, with their, with their you know, uh, school. So please sit down with them, do an in-class lesson. I use that term uh, from Burlington English. I love that. In-class lesson, do sit down with them. Hey, today we are going to look at this article. These are the things we can do. You decide what you want. They can do anything they want with that. Yes? So that is something I really suggest that you do. So let me go back. Any chat? We are good. I only have a couple of more slides to go. If you don't have any questions, I will continue with this. This is not that big deal, but it is in a way big deal. Nowadays, as you know, that's right, Jennifer, sorry about that. Line focus is great for vision problems for, oh yes, dyslexia, that's correct. Really, really great uh, too. I, I, uh, some days in the, uh, you know, like I, my eyes are very tired. I, I use that a lot on my iPad, so that's good. So let's get back to this slide. It says it's privacy in private browsing. There are times that you don't want to leave, um, you know, trace. Of course, anytime. If you are at work, you just want to check out some, you know, uh, uh, Amazon, uh, uh, you know, uh, shopping list or something, whatever that you are doing, and you want, to, you don't want to leave uh, a trace. I don't know how how hundred percent, you know, proof that is or not. But for now, I like it. I will tell you why I like it. I like to travel a lot. When I travel, before I travel. I would, <laughs> that's right, Drusi, incognito mode in, in the, um, I think Google, Google terms that one, I think, right? Um, or, so, or, or private mode. When, what, when would you like to use this? Of course, anytime you want to, but for me, this is how I use it. I check ticket prices. I check, uh, what is it? Uh, hotel bookings, right? I check all these, I do reservations and stuff like that especially with ticket prices. I wanted to know about what is happening, uh, you know, how, how much in each site. I use this new in private window because if I do that, I only go to this website, for example, I just went to Switzerland. So I go to swissair.com or Switzerland, whatever, right? 
I go in there with new in private window. When I do that, other Google or Microsoft Bing or whoever, they do not know what I checked. For example, the price of the ticket would be $1,247. So you marked in your head, you said it's $1,247. You close it. Then you go to another website, maybe United Airline, American Airline, or whatever. You go in there, you look for Switzerland.com. I mean, sorry, so you look for the uh, ticket for Switzerland, right? Through American Airlines or United Airlines or whatever else, right? You go in there and you find the ticket price is $1,480. So what it is, what's happening is this. It, those two sites don't know what you, I don't know what they know each other or not. I really don't know. But you as a customer user, they don't know that you just look at 1,200 and the other website tells 1,400 and nobody knows that I am looking for Switzerland ticket. And doesn't matter, this price has nothing to do with it. But if you were not using in private window, what happens is, because I, I tested it you know, live, I mean, I have tested it several times like that for all the countries that I have gone to. What if you don't use it, what happens is this hike up your, your prices. Seriously, not a joke. I was just looking at in my new private in private window, it says 1247. As soon as I turn off that in private window and I went to American Airlines and it says 1480. And if I went now, go ahead and type in and Switzerland Airlines would say 1480 or around that number, 14, 1500, 1600, whatever it is. Exact same ticket, exact same time frame. I was looking at a new in private window has changed to the other one. So in private, I can't, I'm not saying it's 100% uh, foolproof, but these, this is how I have been getting my tickets in private window. And nobody has to know uh, if I was looking for, a, 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 you know, a Switzerland tickets or not at work or at home or at, you know, in my laptop or whatever. That is the reasons. I hope I give you a very strong reason why I give, I ask you to do the in private window. If you want to shop something and you don't want them to keep tracking you, or if, they, if you don't want them to hike, you know, jet, uh, uh, what do you call it, hike up that prices, now is the time for you to use in private window. All right. So that's pretty much it. And of course, on the screen, you have been reading, I bet your browsing data, such as cookies, browsing history and passwords will not be safe on your device after you are done. So that's pretty good, right? So anyone um, tell, can tell me that you have used in private window for any reason or you have any uh, uh, anything to share? Oh, thank you, Dr. Toiby. That's right. <laughs> yes, I travel a lot. Yeah, I, I, I always do that. And uh, a new in private window is the best for me. Yeah. All right. No chats. Um, so yes. There is one that we missed earlier, and I apologize. Susan asked if the immersive reader, um, when you were discussing that, can the teacher create a page look and then share that link with the student? So can they customize that immersive reader look and then share that link? Or does uh, well, this... True, you can do it if you are doing an in-class lesson. So yes, you. so like this, you want this article, you want this article together and you decide, you know, you create, you, you choose your preferences, whatever, this is the one you want them to focus on verbs today. And then you want them to just, that's all you want and also you want to um, do something you go ahead and do that and then of course you can read it together and this is what you're sharing in class lesson with your with your zoom sharing or with your projector or with a, you know document camera or anything that you want that's one thing you can do or if you are sharing individual one to your students i don't think there is anything that you can um uh, you can what is it called you can make save it as the only thing I can think of is, is this. This is what you can do if you are interested in. This is the article. You want your students to focus on the verbs. You want the students to have black background with the one, the white fonts with the purple 
Is it purple? Yes, it's purple. After looking at too many colors, I can't really see. Purple, um, you know, verbs. And then this is what you really like. You want them to focus? This is what you can do. Go to three dots, click print. Oh, unfortunately it doesn't do. So if it doesn't, that's, that, that was one thing I was thinking. Or if not, what else can we do? There should be a PDF, you know, save it as PDF or something like that. But um, immersive reader usually is to, to, make you, to, to, to make it interactive for the particular person. So it's individual, you know, person thing. It's not for everyone. It's, you know, uh, one size fit all. We want to make it, you know. Oh, this is a good one. Yeah, we want to make it you know, personalized. So that's one reason immersive reader is very popular. Okay, I like what Drusy said. Can you create a QR code? Let's go in here, right click. And if you look at it, that QR code option is not given. You see that? So if it is not given, then there, you, there goes. So if you really like it, this pattern, you can do a few things though. This is my last resort. I will look at it. I am gonna do a screenshot or you see, I can do a web capture here. If I do the web capture, of course, you're gonna to have to do a little, uh, uh, what do you call it, cropping. This is one crop you can do, you copy, right? And then you go and open your, of course, a little stitching need to be done. So I'm gonna show you Microsoft Word. I am coming back. Here, so here is something you can do. I just copied and pasted it, right? We learned those tools before. So this is one thing that you can do. And then you go to the next, the next page, which is maybe around here. Here is another stitch I'm gonna do. You can right click again, web capture, which I just showed you a few sl slides ago. And you can have it here again. Copy, go back to your Microsoft Word, and let's do another stitch. So this is something you can do and you can print it out. You can give it as a, send it as a PDF or a word or something. That's the only, those, that's the only option I've got. Oh, did I just stop sharing? That's the only I've, I've got, I, I, I hope it, uh, yeah, okay. All right, Susan, thank you. So that's it. And uh, let me see what my last one is. Let's go back down here. Last one is security, tracking prevention. Those of you who don't want to use in private window, it's a hassle for you. Actually, it's not a hassle. Just right click on the Edge browser icon and you can just go straight to in private mode um, and while, you know, without having to close all your regular tabs. So this security tracking prevention can be found under settings. The settings are the three dots that I mentioned in the beginning of the, the uh, workshop, the three dots are located on the top of your Microsoft Edge browser. So this is it, the three dots right next to my picture. Of course, it will be your picture or your profile picture, right? Top of the uh, uh, Edge browser window, three dots, you click on it, you click on settings, and then you go to the security. So let's go in here. Sorry, you go to the privacy search and services. So here I am back to Microsoft Edge browser, privacy search and services. If you, you can decide whatever you want. I selected balanced. Please look through these, these are important. And if you put it all strict, this is really, you know, it's my major worry is this parts of sites might not work if you put it in as a strict mode. But if you leave it as balanced, blocks trackers from the site you haven't visited, right? Or sites will work as expected. And this one also said sites will work as expected. And then it also blocks known harmful trackers. So that's something that you might want to have it as balanced. So if you are following along with me, or if you wish to start using Microsoft Edge browser, I really recommend that you check your privacy search and services and select balanced. 
I believe that's all from me.